Intramuros was the biggest European city in Asia. It defines our culture. The problem is most of our officials do not appreciate it. because it's part of our history, part of our heritage, and one of the few physical evidences uh, remaining of uh, the uh, Spanish period of Philippine history. There are many good stories about Filipinos, people who headed the construction of the walls. The carvers were Filipinos also. It was a very exciting time. That's what I remember most, having a restoration force as big as Intramuros was at the time. Well, didn't exist anywhere in the country. When we came into Intramuros to work, uh, what are we restoring? We do not know how did it look, except for the ruined walls. That's why we have to, to dig pictures and pictures and pictures just to be able to to provide a background and in the early days it was really a dead town even when casa manila was finished we would make whatever pakulo just to bring in people uh, the greatest satisfaction i had was uh, the presence of a good team uh, because uh, basically the three of us uh, were the ones who set the initial uh, directions of uh, the Intramuros administration. Since last year, I'm really amazed at how Intramuros has grown and has attracted so many people considering the problems we had in the beginning. There are thousands of people coming here and all of them are paying entrance fees, restaurants, everything. all those calais. Can you imagine? It's alive. You have many people saying that Intramuros should not be preserved because it is a colonial memory and that should be erased. I don't think so. So it's about time that our people should see Intramuros is not just a symbol of colonialization, but a symbol of our spirit to rise above that. during the Marcos uh, administration, Mrs. Uh, Marcos uh, had been interested in the uh, restoration of uh, Intramuros. Uh, she uh, uh, led uh, the restoration of uh, some of the gates of uh, Intramuros. Mrs. Marcos got uh, the engineering divisions of uh, the different uh, services of the uh, military. And, uh, there were lots of objections the attention of President Marcos. So he asked me to draft uh, uh, a charter for Intramuros, which is what I did, and that is the Intramuros Administration uh, Charter. Uh, the greatest satisfaction I had was uh, 
the presence of a good team uh, headed by uh, Mrs. Esperanza Garbonton and uh, in the early days uh, also Felix uh, Imperial uh, because uh, basically the three of us uh, were the ones who set the initial uh, directions of uh, the Intermodus administration. important because it's part of our history, part of our heritage, one of the few physical evidences uh, remaining of uh, the uh, Spanish period of Philippine history. I think uh, the major development uh, since uh, that time uh, was the proliferation of informal settlers. And uh, it seems to me that uh, the uh, proper uh, and humanitarian relocation of those informal settlers is uh, critical to the uh, future progress of the countries. I'm uh, Jaime Laya. And uh, I think the, uh, the directions of uh, uh, the development of Intramuros was uh, embodied in the administration uh, charter continue to be relevant. Well, Intramuros for me uh, is many things because uh, my father used to work in the port area, in the Facio Drive in port area. So even as a small boy, uh, I really knew Intramuros already back in the 50s. And I was very happy to have been appointed administrator in 1989. And uh, that really uh, involved me more uh, with the history of Intramuros and the uh, plans uh, for its further development. It would be very uh, important that uh, we know where we came from and uh, I think that's the uh, special value of Intramuros. But even in modern times, uh, there could be or there should be, and uh, as it's happening now, uh, other developments here in Intramuros. I'm Jose Capistrano Jr., uh, formerly administrator of Intramuros. Well, uh, as what's happening now, uh, Escuela de Talier assists in the restoration of heritage structures uh, through our training of uh, out-of-school youth in the various arts and crafts of uh, heritage uh, restoration. And uh, I think this is uh, important uh, to preserve our historical and heritage structures, uh, and at the same time also reach out to other parts of the country uh, for the same purpose. If you're looking at um, Intramuros from the perspective of history, it's one place where you could actually see the history of the Philippines uh, as it unfolded. Um, I see that um, Intramuros is a, an area which can embody the concept of reuse in urban planning. So just think of old structures being utilized in a modern sense. I think the challenge for us in IA is how can we recreate the former ambiance so that people can relive history um, through Intramuros and then that's where uh, it becomes a site where we can educate people on the version of history according to the Filipinos.
So I am Roberto Alabaro III and uh, currently I'm the Assistant Secretary for Tourism Development Planning and it's fantastic to have an urban area, an old urban area we're in the um, maybe in our generation we can see this transformed into a or a more developed society where poverty will no longer exist within the walls of Intramuros. Intramuros for me is I would say the soul of our country. My name is uh, Paolo Mercado. So I'm the founder and president of the Creative Economy Council of the Philippines. Uh, this is an advocacy group that we set up about two years ago to promote the creative industries, uh, both in the uh, public and private sector. So, the concept of creative economy essentially is uh, taking a look at the contribution of the totality of creative industries and creative individuals to the national economy. So, and to, uh, um, our thrust is to get the government to recognize it as a priority strategic sector and uh, support it with, let's say, um, uh, incentives or in, from the private sector investments that would make it grow faster. So I wish for Intramuros in the near future to become the country's most iconic creative hub. Ano ko po sa Intramuros sa ano? Isang kasaysayang lugar. Kasi dito, dito nagkaroon ng ano, tigman. Hindi nyo natutunan ko sa eskwelahan. Uh, sa akin sir, ang laki po nang naitulong ng eskwela talaga kasi nung Nung, ano, nung una po na hindi pa ako nakapasok dito, high school graduate lang ako, nahihirapan ako maghanap ng trabaho. So nung nakita ko na mag-opening sila na ano, kailangan nila na ng trainees, so pumasok ako yun. Tapos pagka-graduate ko, binigyan nila ako ng opportunity na magtrabaho sa mga heritage site. Uh, ako po si Christian Edward Aguirre. Bali, ano po, instructor po ako ngayon ng ano, Mason Reward Shop dito sa Eskwela Talia. Ang laki ng ano, tulong, unang-una doon sa paninirahan. Uh, nagkaroon, mayroon kami matitiraan sa loob. Dito ako nakatira. Sana po mas tumibay pa ang komunidad dito sa Logan. Nakatira ako sa Basco Street. Intramuros, Manila. Doon ako nagka... ng uh, misip. Doon ako, dito ako nakita. Ano, dito ako lumaki. Ginagawa ko dito sa eskwela talyero, sa trabaho ko. Isa ako sa mga heritage protector. na uh, Isa akong masod. Ito ako yung eskwela talya na nagtitrain sila ng mga out of school dito. May kahit na high school graduate lang. 
pinasok ko. Tinitrain nila hanggang sa mahasa as kinuha din nila as worker din. Ako si Edsel Paul Pauhay ha. Uh, tumutulong para maibalik yung ganda ng drum rolls. Para mas may baganda drum rolls para sa lahat. Escuela Talier, ito yung nagbigay sa akin ng, ano, pangalawang, ng pangalawang pagkakataon na ayusin lahat. Tinutulungan kami para ma-develop yung mga skills namin para magkaroon kami ng kakayahan na gumawa ng sarili rin naming pagkakakitaan. Ang natapos ko dito ay carpentry and woodworks at painting and finishing. Uh, ako si Romel Rivera. Graduate ako ng Escuela Talier ng Batch 7. Ma-improve siguro yung, yung pagkikipagkonekta ng mismong Intramuros Administration sa community. Yung mas mapahal, ano pa, mas mapatibay pa. Pag, pag, pagdadagdag pa sa mga pwedeng magamit na parte ng Intramuros. Yung trabaho ng mama ko kasi dito sa San Agustin Church. Parish coordinator siya, kaya ano pa lang yun, hindi pa ako pinapanganak, nandun na siya. Intramuros, ano na sa akin to, parang mahal ko yung lugar na yun kasi dito na ako, na, dito ako pinanganak eh. Ito, ayun na yung pinakabahay ko, hindi lang yung bahay na tinutulugan ko sa loob. Yung mismo Intramuros, siya na yung pinakabahay ko, yung mismo pater. Safe pa ako pag nasa loob. For me, Intramuros is a place of history. Um, it is a cultural and creative hub, and um, it brings so much pride and joy to the 5th District as well. If I could describe Intramuros in one word, it's mesmerizing because Walking along or walking around, it gives you a sense of history and makes you step into a whole new world that is so different from what you see outside the walls of Intramuros. My fondest memories of Intramuros, I would say, was when I was a little girl because I also grew up here in the 5th district and as a little girl, I would come to Intramuros with my parents, I would tag along, I would ride the Kalesa, I would go around in Tremuros, Port Santiago, and I would remember also coming to Barbaras to eat with my dad. Hi, my name is Crystal Bagat Singh. I am currently the Congresswoman of the 5th District of Manila, where Intramuros is located. One of my advocacies is um, about culture, preserving culture, and uh, one of the things that I also do as a congresswoman is make legislation, and I also have a constituency inside Intramuros. I think it's very important because when you say Metro Manila, there is really no place to go to for a cultural experience or for a historical experience. And there's really no other place like Intramuros. It's, it's, a, it's an original. There's nothing like it. If you want to have a feel of how it was to live during the Spanish times, this is where you go. 
I wish that everybody would work together to keep Intramuros the way it is, but make it better, preserve it better. Intramuros is very important to us because of the lessons in heritage and history. Siguro in one line no, ng objective ng Bahay Chinoy, establish our rightful place in the Philippine sun. Nag, uh, bukas ito sa public noong 1999, no? uh, inilalarawan nito ang bahagi at ang impact ng mga Chinese Filipinos in all aspects of Philippine life. I wish that the Bahay Chinoy can be recognized in the whole Intramuros and the whole Philippine society. I wish all the visitors, the audience, regardless of race, regardless of origin, regardless of your religion, can be recognized as part of this nation and as part of this uh, nation building and the history of the Philippines. Ako po si Teresita Angsi, founding president ng Kaisa Para sa Kaunlaran, at ngayon ay executive trustee ng Kaisa Heritage Foundation na nagmamanage sa Bahay Chinoy Museum of the Chinese in Philippine Life. start here in Fort Santiago where we trace the prehistoric Philippines in the kingdom of Ra Suleiman. He introduced me Manila and I fell in love with it. That's why we started Don't Skip Manila to say, okay, since I fell in love with your stories, why not let's share it to others and let other people to fall in love with Manila. Don't Skip Manila is a tour group that conducts several tours in, in Manila, especially here in Intramuros. We are the one who tells the story of this place and what's the importance of it. We wanted to somehow see Intramuros evolve into not just the old Manila, rather the Manila what is and the Manila of the present. I'm Andre, and this is Han, and we're from Don Skip Manila. Intramuros is a good backdrop of being in a place where the destination speaks itself.
If there's something about Manila that hasn't changed ever since, it's the lovely sunrise and sunset. As if reminding us that in all the chaos, there's still beauty to find in this place we all call home. And moving around it every day, doing the things that we have to do, we completely forget the invaluable history that it holds and the endless possibilities it can achieve. As Intramuros administration celebrates its 40th year, we also celebrate its people. As we work together, inspire each other, and teach one another of the many ways why this city is a place we will always love to call home. Standing as one, so that we never forget the past that taught us how to survive, so we can move forward with a strong heart to build a future that we can all be proud of. We are Intramuros. When I started out with the Department of Tourism, we wanted the theme or to be the overarching theme to be a culture of sustainable tourism. And what's good with uh, Intramuros administration is that we should preserve it because it's a, a historical and a cultural site. And Intramuros is uh, what we can call one of our national treasures. And I want the Intramuros, uh, the district of Intramuros, it's not where you go for field trips or weddings or photo shoots. It should be a place where everybody would like to go to, um, to enjoy the sights. And it's like a place where it's like going back in time. Intramuros is a place, I think, that a living urban heritage district. It's where you have history and culture come to life. I'm Bernadette Romulo Puyat. I'm the Secretary of Tourism and also the Chairperson of the Intramuros Administration. Intramuros should promote the cultures and values of Malasakit and Malikain. Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the Intramuros Administration's uh, 16th episode of the Intramuros Learning Session. Uh, this uh, session is brought to you by the Intramuros Administration and uh, make sure to uh, follow us in social media and we are available on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Our topic for today is Rediscovering Biodiversity in Manila in the Manila urban jungle during the time of the pandemic with our guest speaker, John Ray Callado from the National Museum of the Philippines. Uh, before we start, uh, here are some house rules first. If you would like to ask questions, you may send it to the Q&A button. If you are viewing via Zoom, so it's found in the lower portion of the screen, but if you're viewing through Facebook Live, you may send your questions in the comment section below. Please note that we will do our best to accommodate all the questions subject to the availability of our speaker should we exceed the time limit. Only those who have successfully registered and viewed in Zoom will be eligible to get a certificate. A feedback form will then be emailed to you after the session and the certificate will be sent within a week. 
if you are unable to attend the webinar, please let us know so we can give a slot to another registrant. Ensure that your audio is okay. Wear your reliable set of headphones. Don't be shy to ask questions and get yourself comfortable and enjoy. Now I'd like to call on my colleague, Sheena Botiway, who will introduce for us today our guest speaker, Sheena. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the Administrator for Intramuros is not able to join us today, but I'm here to um, introduce our speaker from the National Museum. Um, he is Mr. John Ray Caliado, and he is a professional botanist and a licensed forester. He has a degree in forestry from West Visayas State University and is currently a museum researcher at the National Museum of the Philippines, Philippine National Herbarium, the Botany Division. He is well published in many scientific journals here and abroad and is one of the authors of the book Guide to the Ter Terodifites of Chiang Mai Thailand. In social circles, he is known as the trail running botanist, having done a lot of trail runs all over the country. John Ray, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Okay. Sure. Wait a minute. Okay, wait now. Okay, sorry for the delay. So, uh, good afternoon, teacher. Uh, everyone, so I would like to discuss about rediscovering biodiversity in Manila's urban jungle during the time of pandemic. So, everyone is in lockdown and they uh, experience anxiety or stress because of this lockdown. So, we'll discuss some of the following. So, the Philippine biodiversity, some green spaces in Metro Manila, green spaces in Manila, uh, UP Wild, Ateneo Wild, and the iNaturalist.org. And also, I would like to encourage uh, everybody to follow Coast Digital Flora and some biodiversity groups. And we'll uh, see some of the native and endemic plants that are found in Manila area, and also some home gardening and some leaf arts and biodiversity arts. So first, the Philippines is one of the 17 megadiversity countries. So in comparison with uh, large countries like China, Brazil, and USA, they are more than 28 times or 30 times larger in terms of land area. But in terms of biodiversity per unit area, so all of the species divided by the total land area, the Philippines will be one of the most uh, diverse. Because of its tropical uh, situation and uh, location, and the complex geological history, the Philippines has several types of forests, like the pterocarp forest, mossy mountain forest, ultramafic forest, limestone karst forest. So these, each forest types have their own specific groups of plants and animals that are specifically adapted to this habitat type. And these are some of the plants and animals that are local and endemic to our country. Such, for example, some uh, sleeper orchids are Philippine tar shear and some countless invertebrates. It's sad to say the Philippines is also one of the biodiversity hotspots. And in terms of the endangerment, so Philippines is among the hottest among the biodiversity hotspots because uh, there are many anthropological uh, 
uh, factors like uh, on the upland areas, there are slush and burn farming kainin. In ultramafic forests, they are being mined because of the uh, presence of metals. Some of the forests are being converted into a uh, fruit plantation like in Borneo, some of the forests have been converted into oil palm plantation. And also in the high Cordillera mountains, they are uh, being converted into uh, vegetable plants. So being in an outdoor, uh, it gives us physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. So as a botanist, it is our duty to go over the Philippines, uh, go over to different habitat types and document, collect, and preserve, maintain specimens for, as a reference collection for our country. So for example, uh, the island of Cebuyan, which the Mount Gitigini is located, it is home to several endemic plants and also animals. Like for example, these three, uh, three ferns are only confined to the mountains of Mount Gitigini. So because of the lockdown, we are not allowed to go outside and go to other areas in the Philippines. So uh, as a stress reliever for me, uh, and the, I go to uh, Google Map to look for possible areas for future field works. So as you can see here, I have uh, located the uh, Mount Data National Park. So as you can see here, this is, these are the only remaining mossy forests found in the area. And the central photo, you can see that roads are being constructed, uh, dissecting high mountains of calderas. Here also shows the limestone cars formation in the Tabon Cape complex in Palawan. Through browsing the Google map, you can see some of the uh, conditions that are for us being uh, suffered now. Like for example, this area, it is the part of Pasanananka National Park in Sambuanga, which just recently a, a population of Philippine Eagle is found. This one at the center shows the mining area in Tawi Tawi, and the last photo on the right shows the adjacent forest north of Pasanananka National Park which seems to be converted into oil palm plantation. Now, the Metro Manila is one of the mega, mega cities in the world, which is composed of more than 13 million people. And there are only limited spaces of green spaces or uh, habitat for some local native and endemic species. At the center, you can see here the La Mesa Eco Park. And here we can see some uh, green spaces in the University of the Philippines and the Ateneo de Manila University. These small spaces is uh, limited in area, but still supports some of our native and endemic species. And lastly, here on the right, uh, you can see the La Papachea or the Las Piñas Paranaque Critical Habitat is a important site for the migrating threatened species like the spoonbills and other uh, wandering birds. So if you want to uh, see some of the native and endemic species that are being documented uh, in the UP while in the UP and Ateneo campus, you can follow the the UP wild and the Ateneo wild where they are continuously documenting uh, plants and animals in the area. As for example here, some nesting birds and feeding of the barbets. While iNaturalist is a good uh, app for you to document plants or animals in your area, and it will uh, be in, uh, will be identified by some of the experts if they will view your photos. Now we go to Manila. So in Man the Manila area, here on the leftmost photo, you can see the Intramuros. Uh, the Nersal Park and the Manila Zoo. So here, this small portion of forest but is the Aceros, Araceros Forest Park. And here are the green spaces of 
uh, Intramuros and the Rizal Park. And you can see here the Manila Zoo. So here, this is the Aroceros Forest Park. So mostly, most of the plants or trees that are being planted there are not native, like Mahogany, Jimelina, and some other uh, non-native to the Philippines. But uh, there are some that are native and endemic that survive in that area. And this forest is uh, important for some native uh, fauna, birds like uh, later, I can show you some of the photos that have been documented in that area. So, and it was been planned for several times that this will be converted into some building, but uh, uh, now I think the city of Manila want to preserve this uh, forest patch. Now we go to Rizal Park. So also it's composed of some native and some mostly are not native species like mahogany, but much of the area, some of the areas have some native and endemic species. And Manila Zoo. So Manila Zoo is also a good spot for locating local flora and fauna. And if you go around the area, there are several nesting birds like the Rufus night heron. Now, if you want to uh, see more of our local flora and fauna for plants, you can follow or go to the group page of Coast Digital Flora of the Philippines. And if you are, if you're, if you want to know the plants that you were documented, you can post your photos, and uh, most of the people that will try to identify your species. And also, you can. Go to the group of Philippine Biodiversity Net Digital Library for of species like fauna and some other plants. Now we go for some of the plants that have been found in the area in Manila area. So this one is the sacred fig, the Ficus reliosa. It's a group of in the Murasi. So this tree is a stronger fig, but they can grow uh, in tall trees. So this one is actually an inflorescence. So this is not the actual fruit, but it is an inflorescence. So the flower, the male and female flower are inside. But this fleshy uh, synconium is edible to birds. So birds like parrots, doves, uh, and yellow vented bulbul are going to the street to feed. Here also, they are a stronger feed. So they grow on top of other trees, and then later the, uh, the, the tree in, inside will die and they will grow on their own. Another non-native plants in the Philippines, but it is very helpful for the native fauna is the baobab or Adansonia digitata. And this uh, tree produces large flowers with some nectar. So during the day, Birds and some insects like bees uh, go to eat pollen, while during the night they are visited by some fruit bats. So the green spaces in the Manila area, you can observe or study certain characteristics of plants, like the Pterocarpus indicus or the Nara. So you can see in one area in CCP complex, there are two types or form of Nara. So the one with a prickly fruit is the Indicos forma in Ichinatus, while the, the smooth Nara is the forma Indicos. Another native tree in the Philippines that can be found in the intermost area and some in the Luneta part is the Bagras or Eucalyptus tiglopta or the rainbow tree. So this tree is actually native on the southern parts of the country, like in Mindanao. And so here, this is Nilad. So Nilad or Skipephora hydropylacea is the plant where the city of Manila has been named. So this one is found in ASEAN Garden in the inside the uh, Intramuros, which has been planted before. So Currently, along the Pasig River, 
and we cannot find any Nilet plant anymore. Another native tree, Pictorus arborescens, uh, produces produces a uh, receptacle that are edible to birds. So this white part is being eaten by the birds. And they are a pioneer species they, and they grow one of the one of some of the fast growing trees and they can easily adapt in the urban areas. So we go now to some of the endemic species found in the Metro Manila or in the Manila area. This one is East East. It's also a member of the fig family. So Ficus olmifolia is endemic to the Philippines. And if you go around in intramuros in the walls, they are commonly found there. And the fruits or the figs are being eaten by the birds. So this one is the Mugan or the Lubilube or Ficus palma. It is also endemic to the Philippines and the leaves are edible. So in some areas like in Quezon and Bicol areas, they are being cooked with coconut milk. Agusbus or Oxmosylon lineari. This plant is commonly used as ornamental plant now. But uh, this was first found in the Pangasinan area, in limestone area. But now they are commonly used as ornamental plants. This one is the Katmon, Delenia philippinensis, and they produce big white flowers. So currently we can found the Katmon trees along the uh, NPDC compound and six new trees of Katmon are being, are, were planted in the Gumbursa uh, monument. So not only some endemic plants are found in the Manila area, we also documented some endemic genus. So the Bagilumbang or, or Chialis trisperma. So the Bagilumbang or the Chialis trisperma is a monotypic genus. So like the Philippine eagle, it is the sole representative of the genus Chialis. And it is only found in the Philippines. Previously, another endemic genus uh, from the family Rutasi or the citrus family, the Swinglea glutinosa, was previously collected in the Philippine General Hospital. But currently, uh, there might be, uh, it's already gone now. And here we can see some of the ferns in Manila area. So like Ajanto Pinipinensi, Teres Ditata, Ajantum, uh, Oyos Pragium Nodiculosum, and Microsorum Sculpendria. So mostly they grow on the limestone part of the wall. So this is a surprise for me when I visited last week the Baluarte de San Diego. So there's a part there that looks like a cave entrance. So ferns, local ferns, uh, like Tectare de Isecta, grow in this condition. So surprisingly, the species Tectaria de Isecta is commonly found in the forest. So it is very uh, puzzling how this fern grow in the urban areas of Manila. Now we go to some of the wildlife that found in this in Manila. So in Luneta Park, uh, there are some creeks, small creeks there. So there are some reticulated python. And in the garden, in the Luneta Park also, you can find some Indotiplops, Brahminus or the blind snake, and the common wolf snake, commonly found in the area. So frogs are a good indicator of the condition of the habitat of a certain forest. So here in the Luneta area, there are only one endemic species, but this species, slender digit chorus frog, or the Kolala picta, I was able to uh, document it three years ago. And now most of the frogs that are found 
in the Luneta area are the inv alien invasive species. So like the greenhouse forest frog, the painted Asian painted frog, and the uh, cane toad. So these uh, frogs, the cane toad is, uh, was uh, introduced to control pests. So, but because it ha doesn't have any natural uh, predator, it become an alien invasive species. And it's now currently un uh, not controlled for the for its uh, invasive uh, aspect. And also the greenhouse frog or the Eleutrodactylus planeros tris was accidentally introduced uh, through uh, ornamental plants that have been brought here in the country. Now we go to the avian fauna. So most of these birds, the black nape oriole and the yellow vented bulbul are active during early in the morning or they are crepuscular early in the morning or late in the afternoon. So you can find them in the Luneta area and also in Intramuros area. Now here, uh, you can see the coppersmith barbet. So this bird is now my colleague in the National Museum, Jasmine Marin, was able to document a nest hole in the Araceros Park. So the Araceros Park is a uh, important uh, forest spots for this native bird. So we need to protect the Araceros Park. And some of the common birds in the area, the Asian Glossy Starling and the Seabird Dove, which is found also in Luneta and the Intramuros area. Now, this is uh, the large bill crow. So yeah, last week I was able to document this one in uh, Fort Santiago in one of them, in mango tree there. So it's a pair of large bill crow, uh, which they are flying between uh, Luneta Park and the Intramuros area. Now, these are the endemic species in the Philippines. The Colasisi or the Loriculus philippinensis and the Philippine Pike Fantail, the Pidura Negritorquis. So, these two, uh, the Philippine Pike Fantail is most more common, commonly found in this, uh, in Lunar Park. Well, the Colasisi, well, the Kulasisi can be found in the Araceros Park, and in the afternoon around 5 a.m., you can find this bird in the Luneta Park also. So, there are also countless of insects that are being uh, found here in the, uh, in the urban jungles of Manila. So, last Last week, I was able to see some the painted Jezebel or Delias hyparete lusonensis. This butterfly is known to uh, uh, the juvenile at uh, the larval stage. The food plant is a member of a uh, mistletoe plant from Lorantesi family. So it is intriguing if there are uh, mistletoe plants here in Metro Manila. Uh, in, the Liman area, I was able to see some mistletoe trees, so they are. It is possible that they were uh, also found here in the Metro Manila, in Manila area. Because of the quarantine, uh, people are stressed of being locked down, so some of them create their own green space in their houses. So you can buy your own plants. Uh, I recommend if you plant local plants rather than non-native plants because they might be uh, future invasive species someday if they escape from the plant. So also, we don't want to uh, buy plants that are being poached from the wild. So always check or check the uh, source of the plants. So refrain from buying 
illegally poach plants. Now, using some of the leaves of native and also non-native plants, we can create some botanical uh, art like leaf cutting art. So as you can see here, you can also combine it with drawings and make some mass out of dried leaves and uh, you can make several art. And also I would like you to follow the National Museum page. So every month we have one or two coloring uh, plates, like for example, this Nepenthes, the pitcher plants, uh, some orchids, the sea turtles, and this, the starfish, hornbill, and some butterflies. So for the next month, we are going to release some more uh, coloring plates for you to enjoy during this lockdown. And our, the Philippines is one of the 17 mega diverse countries, but also it's a biodiversity hotspot. So we need to protect the remaining uh, forest patches in the Philippines and for our next generation. And that's all. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you, John Ray, uh, for that presentation. Now, you're still on share screen. Right. So we are now opening our uh, question and answer portion. Uh, but before that, some reminders first for the Q&A. Uh, if you'd like to ask questions, you may do so uh, in the Q&A button below if you're viewing via Zoom. Now, if you are viewing via Facebook Live, you can also raise your questions in the comment section. Now, we will try to answer as many questions as possible in the next 30 minutes. Uh, but uh, if uh, time will not permit, we will give the email address of the speaker later so that you can, uh, you can consult directly with our speaker even after the webinar. So, all right, so on to the question and answer portion. Our first question is from Edgar Ibanez. As a botanist and forester, what kind of forest can we create in Manila with limited space available? If not for mini forest, what are the requirements in order to create bigger green spaces in urban cities using government lands? So I'm guessing Edgar is talking about creating new forests aside from the existing ones that we have now. So any thoughts? Okay, so for uh, creating forests, so first, I, wait, no lang question. It's in the answer tab. Okay, so uh, along the Ross Boulevard, we can plant some uh, pitch forest type. Uh, trees like Bitaog and Talisay, so they are highly adaptable in the area. So for Luneta Park, we can slowly convert it into a tropical lowland evergreen rainforest by planting some detrocar forest, but slowly changing some or swapping native trees and endemic that are adaptable to the lowland condition. So. Right. Uh, thank you, John Ray. Our next question is from John Paul Abiguera. Uh, recently, Finn Leon's squirrels were spotted in UP Diliman. How should we deal with invasive fauna that threaten native species? John Ray? Yes. Uh, so, many countries are spending a lot of uh, time for trapping and I think the presence of the Finlayson's squirrel is quite difficult to control nowadays. <laughs> I don't have any idea for the solution for now for the squirrel. Sorry, cannot answer that. Thank you. Thank you, dear speaker. Our 
Next question is from Nemesio Macalental Jr. Uh, how can we distinguish uh, a certain tree or plant if it is endemic to our country or not? Does it require expertise knowledge or it can a layman just by viewing a certain tree or plant? Can they uh, determine if a certain uh, flora is endemic or not? Okay. Uh there's a website, the Cost Digital Flora. So the Cost Digital Flora uh, have listed the uh, plants recorded in the Philippines. So you can view uh, the link for every family. It will show representatives of trees and plants. So you can cross-reference your photos with the plants that are present in the, uh, in the website. And it takes a lot of research also to determine if the plant is endemic to the Philippines. You need to research uh, literatures so that you can confirm that a certain plant is native or endemic to the country. And I think there are apps now, no? Na, like you can take a photo of the plant. And uh, then, and those apps have a limited uh, no, uh, capacity because if the native or endemic plants in the Philippines are not yet well documented by the app, it won't uh, show the exact uh, identity of the plant. Is there any effort towards developing an app that is more receptive to endemic plants in the Philippines? I think it, um, there is no... Uh, right. <clears throat> It will take a lot of time to document all the plants first before you can create the app. Right. Uh, our next question, uh, in government-owned properties like in Chamorros, Luneta, Manila Zoo, and Arzeros Park, should we remove the non-endemic plants? How important is making our green spaces? Uh, how important it is that our green spaces have only endemic or native plants? So any thoughts? So if we slowly replace the non-native plants or trees in the areas in Arceros, uh, Arceros, Intramuros, Luneta, and the Manila Zoo, it will provide a habitat for the native. So mostly birds will slowly go to this area. So as you can see, the Arceros part, it is... Uh, good area to start replacing some uh, non-native trees or plants with native or endemic species. So it will promote or it will create, uh, what you call that, uh, a habitat for our native fauna. Are, are there certain plants or trees in your mind that uh, we need to prioritize uh, to remove because of negative impacts in the environment? Uh, for me, we can slowly replace some uh, the mahogany, the big leaf mahogany with either dipter carp species or some other large lowland native trees. So or, this mahogany, like we need to uh, if ever we're going to replace trees with endemic trees, we start with the mahogany, is that right? Yes, uh, but uh, it will be in a transition basis. So before we replace the mahogany, we plant first the seedling of the tree that we will uh, uh, plant, like uh, the pterocarps. And when they grow bigger than the bigger than the mahogany, so we can slowly replace it. We can cut it down. Okay. Our next question is from Cristel Pineda. Sir, uh, thoughts on vertical farming? Oh, vertical farming. Sorry, I don't have any idea of the about vertical farming. Right. Uh, our next question is from uh, Briggs, Francis, and Lily. So this is kind of related to Edgar Banyan's questions earlier. Uh, 
do we have any current plans, like actual plans, to create new forests in Manila? So because of the limited space, maybe the government cannot anymore expand the green spaces, but they can, we can improve uh, those uh, green spaces for people to enjoy the native flora and fauna. Uh, right, so our next question is from John Lil, John Lyle. I hope I'm getting this right. Jurelal Guerrero. So how can we mass produce, uh, mass propagate, I mean, how, do, how can we mass propagate endangered native species? Can we do that or is there a specific agency doing that already? So there are some NGOs like our group, like the Philippine Native Plant Society or the PNPCSI. So they are advocating uh, propagation of our native uh, trees for to be planted on our green space, like in Ateneo area and uh, UP Diliman area, some of them were already planted with endemic and plant and native trees. Uh, Mel Balpawal, she's asking about the water lilies in the Pasig River the white water hyacinth that you see every year floating. Now, are these water uh, lilies uh, endemic? If not, is that a good species to put there in the first place? So the water lilies, or actually they are the water hyacinth, it is uh, alien invasive species. So they are not native to the country, but it was introduced in the Philippines for ornamental uh in the pans and it unfortunately it escaped from the cultivation and it became uh invasive species because there are no natural consumers or predators that eat the plant so they become they grow aggressively and replace replace the native flora uh do you have any idea as to when those uh, lilies were introduced in the Pasig River? Oh, uh, maybe in the early 80s or 70s. Not sure. I need to check for the introduction of the water hyacinth. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Conrado Bugayong. Uh, is it advisable to eliminate invasive species, uh, most especially fauna? And if so, uh, what should be the proper pace on how we can eliminate these invasive species? Uh, okay. So, actually, it needs in-depth research for individual uh, in alien invasive species, like for cane toad. So, they are highly uh, poisonous to some native fauna. And like for uh, the water hyacinth, we can use uh, what an obligate parasite to control the this uh, invasive species. But I just don't have more idea on how to control this uh, alien invasive species. Any thought? Uh, this one is from Dennis Roland Castaño. So. Uh, any thoughts on the Nino Aquino Parks and Wildlife in terms of it being an eco park? So I've been there in Nino Aquino Parks and Wildlife. So there are already some native uh, trees there growing in the area, but we can still add more native plants so that it can promote, it can, it, it will create additional habitat for our native fauna, like birds, in uh, so that it will be a uh, good adapt on the area. Right. Uh, Dennis uh, Castanius, Dennis Roland Castanius is asking, he's asking about the laws which uh, protect our flora and fauna. Uh, 
can you think of any law which uh, you can share that uh, deals specifically with conser with the conservation and protection as well as the propagation of our endemic uh, flora and fauna? Uh, do you have some in mind? So our native in the our flora and fauna are protected under the in the what you call I forgot the. Public, uh, so the I forgot the protected species. Sorry. <laughs> so there is a law. So yeah, there's also uh, there already a law that protects our native endemic species, plants and animals. I just forgot the right the law. It's good to hear that uh, we have a law protecting our endemic species. Now, uh, we have a question from, oh, oh, right, so it's RA 9417. Yes. Right, so our next question. Uh, sorry, the Wildlife Act. Uh. Yeah, the Wildlife Act. Uh. So our next question is from Justin Policarpio. Hello, sir. Can you suggest endemic trees for Manila, for the Manila streetscape in order for uh, the city sidewalks to be more walkable. So do you have some in mind? Streetscapes. Maybe some like uh, Dita tree or uh, there are some Dita tree or maybe Katmon. It's a good. Uh, candidate for that. Yeah, and I'm also guessing that the roots need not uh, like affect the structures, no? Yes. That's also a consideration. Yes. Right, so... Uh, hmm. We have a question from Irene Tamparon. So, uh, what are your thoughts on green spaces in schools and offices so uh like i showed the photos in the manila area so these uh schools could plant some native and endemic trees so that it could facilitate the uh the, the fauna to adapt in that area. So it's a good thing to start plant more native trees and endemic species. Thank you, uh, dear speaker. I see that we have some Zoom participants who are raising their hands. If you'd like to ask questions, you can raise your questions in the Q&A button below the screen if you're viewing via Zoom. And if you're in Facebook, in the comment section. All right, so for now, the last question so far. So uh, we have from Adrian Elo. She's he's talking about golden miagos. Is that endemic to the Philippines? Yes, but the, the, maybe the golden miagos is already a uh, uh, cultivated plant that been uh hybrid thank you speaker uh that's our last uh, question for today so if uh, you have more questions uh don't worry you can uh, consult directly with our speaker via his email janraycalado at gmail.com so you can directly email him for your questions. Now, uh, for those who came in late in this episode or for those who have missed this uh, session, don't worry because later, within 24 hours, we're going to upload this session in our YouTube channel. Uh, so you just need to go to our YouTube channel, uh, key in Intramuros Administration or go to bit.ly slash IALS and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. 
And of course, uh, for future updates for our future webinars, uh, uh, you can visit our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we actually have several episodes lined up for this month. So stay tuned and uh, make sure to get uh, get updates immediately from our social media channels. And uh, we are also available in Google Arts and Culture. So uh, you can visit our museum from the comfort of your home because we have uploaded our digitized museum collection in Google Arts and Culture. So you can see our antique collection, our uh, sculptures, our ivory, our textiles, and some old photos. So you can visit Google Arts and Culture, key in Intramuros Administration. And let me take this opportunity as well to promote our talk on July 18. So this will be our 17th Intramuros Learning Session episode. So the topic will be coffee. Philippine coffee, a case for conserving our coffee heritage. So our next topic is about coffee by Rich Watanabe, Watanabe founder and CEO of SGP Coffee and Coffee Science Center Incorporated. And also, uh, this is, uh, we would also like to promote uh, the, the event of our partner, the International Council of Monuments and Sites. Uh, the title of the talk is Clothing and Spaces by Stephanie Koo. So that's on July 11, Saturday at 3 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Stephanie Koo will share her knowledge on 19th century Philippine fashion as captured in her book, Clothing the Colony, 19th Century Sartorial Culture, 1820 to 1896. So for those who are interested in fashion history, so this is an interesting talk to attend. So make sure to... So uh, make sure to uh, register uh, in the ECOMOS page. So uh, before we end, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Chandra, do you have any final words you'd like to say? Hello. So for final words, so uh, let's learn more about our native flora and fauna. So hopefully in the near future, the National Museum of the Philippines will reopen and you can learn more about the endemic flora and fauna by visiting the National Museum of the Philippines. But as for now, uh, let's uh, uh, be safe and stay uh, uh, health, uh, sorry, uh, Stay healthy. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So you heard that. So you can also subscribe to the Facebook channel of the National Museum of the Philippines. And uh, they also have this coloring book of uh, Philippine endemic plants. Sorry, Mona. Yes, it's available. So you can check it out. You can download. You Facebook. So that's it for now. Uh, see you in our next episode. Uh, but for now, yeah, um, till next time. So, yeah. Bye bye for now. Thank you.